Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to look at the GP Denan in 2019. The famous race, the GP Denan in northern France, underwent a reinvention in 2019 as the organizers changed the race from a simple sprint race to a more Belgian cobble classic style race by including 21 kilometers of pave over 12 sectors, some of which also feature in Paru Bay. To put it in perspective, when Arnaud de Mar clinched the title in 2017 from Nasser Bouhani, there were only two kilometers of pave. This change in the course attracted more classic equipped riders, including demi cycling guard Mathieu van der Poel. We joined the race with under 17 kilometers to go, and at this point, there were only two pave sectors left to deal with. Dutch team Rompot Charles are desperately trying to claw back the gap for the peloton, and Mathieu van der Poel is in the front group and looking comfortable after he attacked with execution. There are several attacks that attempt to bridge the gap but without any success. The chasing truncated peloton are benefiting from the indecisiveness of the front group with a few fast guys in the group including Timo Dupont looking to snatch the win in the finish. Direct Energy have two guys in this group but seem reluctant to sacrifice any of them to help maintain the gap as we see the Direct Energy rider softly rolling through for his turn. Match of Vanderpool and Alex Kirschen of Trek Segafredo seem to up the tempo as they come through to take their respective turns on the front. Alex Kirschen looks back as he pulls off and forces Direct Energy to take the front and the Direct Energy rider actually begrudgingly looks at Kirchen, as he probably doesn't agree with that. The helicopter shop shows the gap is not tremendous and when we next go back to the front with 13 kilometers to go, our Israel startup nation rider hits out right before the pave sector. The rest of the group are quick to respond as they turn into the 600 meter two star pave section. Macho van der Poel goes to the edge of the road to limit his exposure to the cobbles and it will also be faster to do that as they're smoother. Van der Poel ups the tempo with Kirsch on his wheel passing the Israel Startup Nation rider before jumping back to the edge of the road for that smoother section. The group has now been reduced down to three riders. Matthew van der Poel pushes on as he can see what appears to be the peloton in the background. Estonian Mikkel Reim is the rider who managed to cling on to Matthew van der Poel and Kirsch. Kirsch offers another turn at the front as the trio are motoring it over the pave at this point. Ryan finally takes a turn at the front, but if you blink, you'll miss it. With 11 kilometers to go, we can see from the helicopter shot that the group only have a small gap, which can only be a handful of seconds down to the chasers. The peloton sweep up two riders from the early breakaway with Rompot leading the chase. As we have no indication of how much time they have an advantage over the peloton, we'll use the pole on the side of the road. And as we can see, with 10 kilometers to go, they actually have an eight second advantage, which is not a lot. Two riders seem to attempt to bridge the gap from the peloton, but after a bit of indecisiveness from the pair, they're actually passed by a third hopeful rider. And one of the two riders actually jumps on to this third rider to try and peg back the gap. With 9.6 kilometers to go, the trio embark on the final pave sector of the race, which is 1.2 kilometers long and a lot more savage than the other one we saw. Match van der Poel takes to the front and again races along the edges of the road and this increases the lead by a few seconds to the chasing bunch and being at the front in this case is actually a good place for Match van der Poel to be. Firstly, he can pick out his own race line on the pave and also it reduces the chances of being involved in a crash and also having more control over the two other riders as you can see if any of them will attack as they'll have to go out on the rougher pave sector to do so. And in the bunch, we can actually see riders struggling to do exactly this, battling for position and having to come on the hardest part of the cobbles to move up in the field. We can also see on the power sector to the right that the paramedics are actually ready even with an air ambulance in case anything goes wrong, but it seems like no crashes are going on. And up front, we can actually make out from the helicopter shot, Macho van der Poel increasing the gap to him and his two breakaway companions as the gap increases significantly. With neither Kirsch or Reim able to respond to Macho van der Poel's increase in acceleration. When the pictures are returned to the front of the race, we finally see the damage Macho van der Poel has caused, with his companions far in the distance as Macho van der Poel motors it up front. When Machu van der Poel finally escapes the final pave sector, he gets into a tuck position as he tries to stay as aerodynamic as possible. However, with six kilometers to go, the duo have been joined 
by a third rider and still have a minuscule gap to the peloton. As the peloton passed the 5 kilometers to go sign, Machu Van der Poel has an advantage of 200 meters, which is not very much if the sprint teams can actually get organized and actually work together to reduce this gap. However, we don't know how many of the Lira men have actually survived the cobble sectors. Machu Van der Poel looks less comfortable than he did before as he's still able to maintain the gap for the time being. With less than 4 kilometers to go, Machu Van der Poel has an advantage of 17 seconds to the chasing trio as he adopts the TT tuck position once again. Behind him, the trio look doomed as the peloton are rapidly closing the gap to them. As Machu Van der Poel passes the 3 kilometers go sign, the trio are basically caught and their day is over. But crucially, the momentum of the chasing pack seems to be subdued as the front of the peloton looks unwilling to commit to the chase and the only person benefiting from this is Machu Van der Poel who's motoring it at a constant pace. With two kilometers to go, Machu Van der Poel has managed to increase his lead to 20 seconds as it seems the peloton could not get organized after they caught the trio. As he passes the one kilometer to go banner, Machu Van der Poel has a sizable gap but the pain is starting to show not only on his face but also He's rocking a lot more, but it looks like he won't be brought back at this point. From the helicopter shot, we can actually see this tiredness in Machu Van der Poel as he's clearly rocking here. And we can only deduce that the effort is really starting to set in. He takes a quick look back with around 200 meters to go as he realizes that the victory here is assured. And in the last 50 meters, he even stops pedaling and seems to be so tired that he nearly forgets to celebrate. However, he manages to just about lift his right arm slightly for the standard victory photo as he crossed the line. Behind Machu Van der Poel, the sprinters are starting their sprint and we can see when they cross their line, the gap to Machu Van der Poel was actually only two seconds, which means he lost 18 seconds in the last two kilometers. So this means that the two second advantage that Machu Van der Poel had after they opened their sprints was actually lost when they caught the trio and lost the momentum of the chase but that's definitely not taking anything away from Machu Van der Poel's effort which started with just under nine kilometers to go after having motivated the break in the first place and him just motoring solo. We saw this incredible power in Amstel Gold as well where he dragged himself and a group back into contention where he finally finished off the sprint. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you're new here why not check out the video where a 17 year old Thibaut Ness actually beat Machu Van der Poel in a so-called cyclocross race or when Machu Van der Poel and Wout van Aert went head-to-head -head in one of their first races in, in the Brussels Cycling Classics on the road. Hope to see you soon again on the Cycling Dane channel.